Hey, so okay, um, you know I was uh, looking around on YouTube today, actually just uh, like half an hour ago, and uh, I had some video ideas what I was going to do for this weekend, I was put some stuff together, and uh, I went on this guy's site, uh, he's a 14-year-old he's a old, uh, old kid, and uh, he, at, at 14 years old, I mean he can do stuff that you know I, I know I couldn't do when I was 14 years old, and so he's working on this, uh, this doom buggy, right? And, uh, and uh, so I watched, I think I've watched all his videos about the Doom Buggy and uh, he seems kind of stuck on the, uh, the steering. He's got this little rocket pinion steering and he can't get the, the geometry right. I uh, started on this, uh, I don't know, like four years ago or so and uh, I pretty well had it finished and then I got myself kind of beat up in a dirt bike crash and I was kind of out of the shop. But anyway, so, uh, you know, oh, this poor kid, I just wanted to go over there and help him. So. Okay, that's going to be the video for today, I thought. I'm going to make a video on the steering and suspension because from what I can tell, that was what was kind of hanging them up. So, let's, uh, let's have a look here. Okay, so this is the site I was talking about. Um, Eben Trawick, this video is for you even though I've never met you. So, <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. Okay, it's a bit windy outside. I'm standing in the shop. I don't like uh, filming in the wind, but uh, I pushed it outside in the sun. I'm going to do a quick walk around in the wind here, and then I'm going to push it back in, and we'll talk about the machine. So um, I uh, I got a 700 uh, cc uh, twin engine from a, a Polaris Sportsman. That's what uh, I use for the for the engine. I've got uh, 12, just over 12 inches of suspension front and back. And uh, these fenders I got from uh, Dennis Kirk, I think they were supposed to be uh, add-on fenders for a uh, 400EX. But the rest is, uh, it's just all tubing. I bought a, a tubing bender so I could bend all the tubing, you know, all the stuff. And um, I got a little uh, little uh, uh, tool tray in the front here and, uh, and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, I've driven it, uh, I've probably got like half an hour of driving on this machine. And I haven't driven it now for uh, probably uh, two years, so. But uh, the steering works really good. You can hold it straight, you know, at, uh, at full speed, which is maybe, you know, maybe 50, 55 miles an hour is maybe top speed. Okay, I'm gonna move it back inside, then we'll talk more about it out of the wind. Here's a little RC car. It's a 1 10th scale. Uh, this is one of the things that inspired me to build this thing. Uh, also, when I was a kid, a buddy of mine had a, a a Honda Odyssey, it was a 250, one of those uh, old yellow ones. Um, just a blast. So you see how it's narrow in the front to, to make use uh, or to make room for the uh, suspension? Well that's kind of what I did with this one too. You see it's narrow in the front to make, make uh, room for the A-arms, right? So, uh, and then it uh, gets wider for the driver and uh, it's got the five-point harness, all that stuff. Okay, so now looking at it from the front, Here's my uh, little rack there for the rack and pinion uh, steering. The uh, tie rod just goes through the paneling here and then, uh, and then down to the wheel. Then I put uh, uh, tilt steering into it with uh, this slider. See it slides on that uh, the tube there and then it's got a lock here when you have it where you want. So here is the machine with the steering all the way cranked to one side and uh, it's uh, more than enough you know, uh, steering. I mean, it's uh, it it steers uh, nice and sharp. And you notice how the this one is also turning uh, more than that one, so that the inside one always has more uh, more uh, turn than the than the outside one, which is also what you want. But okay, so since you can't change uh, how much stroke that the the rack and pinion has, or at least it would be very hard to do so. Um, the only thing left that can affect how far the wheel is going to turn is how long this arm is where the tie rod attaches. If that's a really short arm, it's gonna turn more. If it's a really long arm, it's gonna turn less. So that's the, uh, that's what it is that uh, determines how far it's gonna steer. Okay, let's get into some nitty gritty here for this steering and suspension. Um, to get your, uh, your wheels to behave themselves when, you're, uh, when your suspension is doing its job, and by that I mean is, uh, often when guys, you know, build their suspension for their go-kart, dune buggy and all that stuff, the, uh, the, uh, the wheels, uh, the front steering wheels will, will, will do this or this or this, you know, during its suspension travel. So your, your wheel moves 
upwards for your suspension and then the tire gets, gets pulled in and as it goes down it pulls out or, or opposite or whatever. So I'm going to show you some things that I did here that worked for me to uh, get this really nice as far as uh, keeping the wheels in line during the suspension. A couple of things. Uh, actually, it's really important that your, your control arms are the same distance uh, at all three points. So from here to here, if you measure that, it should be the same as from here to here. And if you measure at the front, it should also be the same as, as it was in the, in the back. So this, this gap, all three points have the same distance. That's important. Um, also, what's important here is the, uh, the, the tire rod. Probably, probably more important than what I just explained to you is the, the distance of your tie rod from here to the top of the control arm should be the same as from here to the top of the control arm. If, you're, if your tie rod does not run parallel with the control arms, then uh, that's probably your biggest source of headaches right there. You have to run uh, the same gap from your tie rod to the control arm here as you go as it is uh, from your tie rod to the top of the control arm here. So everything is the same. If you look at the, the, the control arms, you know, and the tie rod, everything is parallel. That's really important. Also, this pivot point for the tie rod, where it attaches to the rack, uh, it's important to try and get that pivot point as close as you can to the uh, pivot point of the control arms. And uh, that is probably some of the biggest things you can do with your suspension to get your wheels to behave themselves when the suspension is doing its job. Also, I want to talk about caster. So looking at my control arms from the top, you will see that the top control arm is moved back compared to the one on the bottom. And uh, I did that just by shaping, you know, I, I just welded it up differently than, than the bottom one, just so that, that this mounting point was, was farther back than, uh, than uh, the bottom one. So that creates caster. I've got, I think it's uh, seven degrees caster, if I remember right. So caster is your, is your, uh, Here's your here's the spindle right here, and um, that's where the where the wheel turns. You turn the whole thing on that. So this uh, that spindle there is set back, um, or you could say that the, the the bottom is actually moved forward, kind of like your bicycle. You know the the forks on your bike. Well, think of that. Like you want to kind of simulate what your uh, the, the the forks on your bicycle are doing, and that uh, creates stability. You know, uh, you know when you're when you get the machine up to speed, then the the wheels uh, kind of want to just keep going in a straight line, and they kind of know what they're supposed to do, and uh, that's what caster is. So, you know, you got uh, so if you look at your spindle now on this machine, this spindle is forward like that. You know, we're looking at the the front of the machine would be that way. So now it's angled like that. Hey, okay, so a couple of videos back, uh, I mentioned uh, one of my YouTube friends uh, on one of my videos and I got his name all wrong and I, I felt bad later and uh, so I'm going to do it again and uh, uh, Duckman, I hope you, uh, hope you still like me uh, after getting your name wrong the first time, but uh, this time I'm going to get it right. Uh, one of my friends on uh, YouTube, VV, the duck VV, and uh, what else did I do? I, uh, I did all kinds of terrible damage to this guy. I said he was from New Jersey. Well, he's not from New Jersey, he's from Florida. And I said, uh, oh, it's W, what did I say? I said, W the duck, W. Well, anyway, so uh, so uh, I hope I uh, straightened all that out. This is the, the guy right here, so check him out.